Well, my next guest is true Hollywood royalty with a glittering career spanning seven decades, awarded the Damehood by Prince Charles for services to her services to charity in 2015. And next week will be part of the Dames in Jags procession at the Queen's Jubilee pageant. I'm thrilled to say Dame Joan Collins. Hello. How are you? I'm great, but I want to congratulate you on having your own show. Thank you. I think it's great. Well, it's lovely to be, it doesn't great. really feel like my own show until you're here. Oh, I feel like you're anointing me. Like It's almost after the Queen, it's the next best thing to a royal visit. Oh, please. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> now, you're part of the Dames in Jags. What is this? The Hags in Jags, I <laughs> <laughs> Well, after they... I mean, this thing is going to be so enormous. I mean, so fantastic. It's going... Have you ever been to the um, Thanksgiving, Macy's Thanksgiving yes. parade? It's going to be like that. They're going yeah. to have all these floats. They're going to have um, people dancing and singing and all kinds of people on it. And then we are coming down in these amazing vintage Jaguars Brilliant. open. Uh, I've got a white one and Twiggy's there and Dame Darcy Bussell and um, I can't remember who the others are. You must have it written down somewhere. A great, but yeah, a load of great dames. Well, I think so. And yeah. then we are going to go around waving gracefully, I mm. hope, to um, the populace who are going to line up, mm. and then we're going to go and hopefully um, go into one of the boxes and watch the rest of it. But it's very exciting because mm. I'm such a monarchist and I'm such a royalist and I love the Queen so much that to have been asked is a is a great is really. You've been in you've been in movies seventy years. The oh. Queen has been on the throne seventy years. I know. Oh it's my quite God. amazing. And there you are together. But well, yeah. what are you, she's a remarkable woman, isn't she? She is the most inspirational woman, I think, that ever has lived in my lifetime. Mm. I don't know. I never knew my Mother Teresa or Joan of Arc, mm. but, I mean, they were probably pretty good. Mm. But, no, she is, because she's so uh, down-to-earth and gentle and humorous, and uh, she's got through all of these dreadful things that have happened to her. I mean, they really have been yep. some awful things that she's had to deal with. And she does it with such grace. And the fact that she has never, ever commented on anything that's going no on. No interviews. Way, nothing. Yeah. But even an aside, because, you know, there are people that are lip reading mm. and they could say that she said, oh, I think this, this play is ghastly, mm. as we all do when we go to see something. Mm. But the last time I saw her, we had, it was at Buckingham Palace, and we were talking about Pygmalion, My Fair Lady, yeah. because some students gave um, a performance. And she's so knowledgeable about mm. the theatre. Mm. And we had a really very nice chat. No, I just love her. She's been a part of my life. I kept a, a scrapbook of her wedding to mm. Prince Philip when I was a, a schoolgirl. We were all madly in love with Prince Philip at school, yeah. you know, because he was so good looking. She must really miss Philip, don't you think? I mean, well, after, what, 74 70 years, years yeah. of being married? Yes, well, look at that man who just died yeah. with a broken heart. I know, well, the, yeah. the story from Texas. I the, know. I mean, imagine, they've got four children. Oh, no. The, the teacher had been teaching there for many years. Oh. She gets shot dead by this lunatic, and then within 24 hours, her husband literally dies of a broken heart. This was his yeah. childhood sweetheart. But oh. Those four kids now have no parents. Oh, my God. It's, it's heartbreaking. It, it's beyond terrible what goes on with these things. I don't understand why if somebody posts pictures of themselves on social mm. media, buying guns, talking about guns, saying, I want to kill mm. people, why they can't be... Why the FBI or the CIA or whoever go after He literally after put them. on Instagram pictures of the two AR-15 rifles. But here's the point. He was 18... And when he turned 18 a couple of weeks ago, he was legally allowed to buy these guns. He went and bought these guns. He couldn't have bought a beer. That would have been illegal. He couldn't buy a Kinder Surprise chocolate egg. They're illegal in the whole of America because the toys may choke you. Ah! But an 18-year-old boy could buy two AR-15 semi-automatic rifles and then go and do what he did. And it's that inconsistency of the laws which I find so completely baffling. But I will say to people, you and I have worked in America a long time, mm -hmm. lived there... It's, it's embedded in the culture. They have half of the world's guns are in, Amer in America. Nearly half of the population of America own guns. So you're talking about 150, 60 million people in a country who have guns and therefore support their usage. And they believe passionately that the Second Amendment of the US Constitution entitles them, as ratified by the Supreme Court, to own firearms. Well, 
I can understand that you might want to own a firearm, mm. a small Glock or something, but to own two assault rifles mm. or to own machine guns, yeah. that's what I don't understand. And I don't believe that 40% or whatever percentage you said of the population goes along with that. Mm. I think that they want to have a gun, and if somebody comes into their property, they can shoot them. But Assault rifles? I mean, What's it's happening really with young people, Joe? I mean, the last two massacres, the one in the supermarket, the white supremacist, and now this one, they're both 18 years old. The Sandy Hook shooter was 20. What is going on with these young men that they're so completely detached from reality and so angry that they want to go and commit these atrocities? Well, I have a theory that young people today are brought up and love violent... Um, Movies, Video violent games. Yeah. Uh, this games, one, this one did he violent. Like, he liked Call yeah, of Duty. They, they live on them. They yeah. they're brought up at, from the age of four or five. I think it desensitizes and, them. Of course it does. It's like porn. The same right, thing. Right. It desensitizes. Which is why I think that women are being abused so much. Yeah. Um, and I don't understand why that is allowed mm. because uh, Percy and I, uh, we watch a lot of television. And so many things we'd say, we can't watch this. Mm. The whole screen is covered in blood. Mm. You know, the, you know there's 4,000 people being killed. And there's the most awful thing, that women being abused and mm. slapped and hit. And it's just not right. It's not what I... I wasn't allowed to see certain movies. Remember, mm. they used to have U certificate, universal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I wasn't allowed to see anything like that. And I think that's probably... You know, my generation is more... Yeah, I think it's a lot of things. I think the desensitising is definitely part of it. They all seem to be yes, addicted definitely. to violent video games. I think that they're... I think medication. America's a very heavily medicated country. Well, it's not country. just Americans. No, no, but it? I'm saying I don't think they have any more of that than the mo many countries or, indeed, more mental health issues. Yeah. What they do have is mentally deranged people who can get very easy legal access to weapons of war. I mean, when you mm. see these guns, these are like machine guns. Ah. Machine guns are actually illegal in America, but these are semi-automatic. They can fire a bullet every time you pull a trigger. And obviously, if you're going to buy something like that, you're going to kill somebody. Well, he bought so 375 sure. rounds of ammunition. And the guy He's who 18. was in the shop right. has, not, it, has the FBI in it, it talked it, it, to this it guy? It seems completely... Crazy, it, it, isn't it? It is crazy. Well, thank God it, it can't happen in this country. Yeah. Well, it happened I mean, here in Dunblane. In Scotland. But that was how long ago? 1996. Okay. And I was actually and editing stopped. the Daily... Well, I was editor of the Daily Mirror at the time. And we... Yeah. But you see, Britain wasn't a gun culture country at the time. No. Very few civilians owned guns. Mm -hmm. So it was an easier campaign, really. We all came together, left and right. It wasn't political. I always say this to my American friends. I don't know why politics gets involved with this. This is about saving kids from being shot dead at school. But, you know, we campaigned, we got the laws changed, and we haven't had a school shooting since. America's had 27 school shootings this year. I, I can't, you know, I mean, can you imagine being a mother and hearing that? No. Or even being a mother now and sending your kids to school and thinking, are they going to be safe? Just, just I mean, you always thought your children were going to be safe I, I actually school. emailed a, a friend of mine who's one of the dumb blame mothers, because every time yes. one of these things happens, I just can't imagine what they go through. And I sent her a note, and she replied a very nice, heartfelt email. But it always takes them straight back when they have this. To, well, of to course what it does. And their and kids never grow up. And, and just what they have to go through is so unthinkable. I think it's. I think the whole thing is unthinkable. And I think the mm. whole thing of somebody mentally wanting to kill children, yeah. babies, which of course is what is going on in Ukraine as yeah. well. But we don't seem to talk about that anymore. Well, that's another it's... thing. You know, Ukraine's disappearing from the news agenda. I know. Which is what Vladimir Putin wants. Oh, he's he carrying. Does? He's, yeah, of course, he wants us to stop talking about it. Let him just carry on seizing the country. Uh, it's just appalling. Which is uh, what he's doing. You know. But is it true that? He's very ill. I keep on hearing these rumours. That People say that. Yeah. I mean, who the hell knows? All I do know is he is razing cities to the ground, literally destroying them. Worse like, than Hitler. Like he did in... Yes, he is. Worse he, than Hitler. He, he's, well, he's, he's, he's up there with Hitler. Yeah, up there. And I think his aspiration is to seize Ukraine and then to try and seize other countries. Oh, of course. And he has Next to be stopped. stop, Finland. Yeah. Norway. What do you make of Partygate, the... Boris Johnson? You know <laughs> Boris Johnson. You've been at parties with Boris yeah, Johnson. Yeah, he was my boss once. When he was... Uh, at the Spectator. When he was a, a yes. Spectator, yeah. Um, what do I think of it? I, I have to say I haven't really uh, gotten involved in it totally, but I haven't exactly seen, you know, fizzing bottles of champagne and lots of... and people sitting down. To me, a party is people sitting well, down Well, they had a few big ones. Drink. I mean, he may they not really have been... really did? As, he I haven't read been, 
there have been some big ones, and they were vomiting mm. and fighting well, and that's breaking nice. stuff. Yeah, but I don't, I don't go to parties. But where ultimately, it's vomit. not about parties. What it's about, it's about the fact that they were doing all this, breaking the laws they had made. Yes. And everybody else, including the Queen, who at Philip's funeral had oh, to sit on her own that tragic because she picture. wanted to obey the yes, rules. I and know. the night before, they were partying in Downing Street till 4 a.m., which really? I think is unforgivable. Well, I do too. I think it's terrible. But what are you going to do? I mean, you're going to get rid of Boris. Who are you going to bring in? Actually, yes, Andrew I do, actually. I, I do think when a prime minister breaks their own rules and gets fined by the police for it during a pandemic, that's a resignation offence. It used to be. Well, in the old days, men would fall on their sword as yeah. a matter of honour. I don't mm. think he knows how to spell the word. Well, who do you suggest, then, is our next prime minister? Somebody that can restore a bit of integrity somebody, and trust. Somebody. Who's the somebody? There's always somebody. There's never... Every time you think I a leader... I don't think there's a no somebody. No leader is irreplaceable. <laughs> No, you, I, I mean, you it... are, but you're, you're irreplaceable. <laughs> I'm not. Um, I don't know about that. Let me talk to you about another thing. Uh, Wimbledon today has announced mm. that they're removing from the honours board Ms and Miss before the names of previous winners. They want to make it gender neutral. What are your thoughts? I think that's just the way everything is going, isn't but, it? But what, why? what about the men? Well, the men, yeah. they, they just call them, you know, N. Djokovic. I... It's just something that's been going on, and it's um, something to me that, that, you know, since Emily Pankhurst, mm. women have fought, fought, fought for equal rights. So I suppose this is them saying, well, this is equal rights, you know, the well, men What if they say to you, right, you can't be called a dame anymore because it's too female a title? Well, they haven't said that to me. But what if they did? What if they came for your damehood? Well, I just threw it to them. <laughs> you wouldn't. You love being a dame, don't you? I love being a dame. I mean, uh, it's, it's very flattering in Britain, particularly, because mm. people know what it is. In the rest of the country, they don't know. I mean, mm. in the rest of the world, in America, a dame? The dame <laughs> is, you know, something from Damon Runyon. It's what Frank Sinatra I mean, used dame. to call his girlfriends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. dame. Yeah, and, uh, of course, in, in Europe, like in France, Percy mm. sometimes says to somebody, it's dame jungle, oh, dame, dame, dame. Yeah, they, they think <laughs> this is... No, I like... I like it, of course, but, you know, well, you I'm very old-fashioned. So when, when you see this debate where politicians can't even say what a woman is now, what do now, you make... Now, now... Well, now we're not going to get on that subject. I do not approve of people saying that. Of course not, because it's just not fair. It's not right. And um, well, I, mean, what I do is the not answer to wish that question? to get cancelled by the trans community. No. Thank you very much. Yeah, but what is a woman? What is a woman? Me. <laughs> <laughs> Celia, that <laughs> her over there. <laughs> There's but, plenty of us. I mean, but are you worried that in this trans debate, because I support trans rights to fairness So and do equality, I, of course. I just don't like the attack on women's rights that some of the activists are driving, where you have in sport this apparent unfairness now going on. I mean, what do you think when you see that? Well, I don't watch sport. No, but you know what I'm talking about. Well, I know what you're talking about, yes, and I know what you want me to say. I don't want you to say I anything. Yes, I never of course you dream do. to tell you yes, what to you say. Yes, you want me to agree with you. No, no, no I, I don't. don't. This is uncensored, no, Michelle. Um, well, of course it's uncensored. I think that a person should be who they feel that they are and who they... But I do believe... I can't say this. I can't you say can. this. No, I can't. Why? You feel because, like you no, can't because you make it trouble. I can't because I don't want to get hate mail. You see, but you've gone through your entire career saying exactly what you always think. No, I haven't. Yes, you have. No, I've read I your diary. I haven't. <laughs> I've, never, I've never gotten into the uh, politics of biology. OK. No, I haven't. Well, I understand why I people don't want to go there. Yeah. Well, yes, I don't want to go there. Talking, well, talking about biology, what about Madonna, who's auditioning for a new boy toy? <laughs> You're kidding. She is. No, you've just made that up. No, she's apparently... Really? She wants him to be hard-bodied. What do you mean? Hard-bodied and young. Oh, that's right. We were with her son, Rocco, yeah. uh, last summer. Huh? And he said, you know, my mother says that she will not sleep with anybody over the age of 25. <laughs> I said, no, oh, Rocco, you... you're kidding. Well, uh, that's never been your rule. Has it? No, I don't have rules. <laughs> rules. I'm very happily married. We, 20 years, you didn't come to our anniversary party. I wasn't here, as you know. I, know, I was in Australia. Yeah, I know, I know. It was a yeah. fantastic party. And the great yeah. Percy, is, as he always is, he's lurking in the wings like a protective oh, knight. Oh, don't say that word, lurking. He's standing Like a protective there. knight, look at him. He's uh, standing. He just got... He saved me from the most embarrassing wardrobe malfunction really? party. Really? <laughs> 
Yes, I was talking to Richard Arnold, your friend. Oh, yeah. And he was terribly funny. He made me laugh. Mm. And the whole zipper in the back of my dress went. No. <laughs> and I'm sitting there with completely gaping open. And there's loads of photographers. It was a big party. And I said to Percy, I don't know what to do. I know there was mm. another dress I was possibly going to wear. Because the theme was red, white, or blue. Because yeah. it was a jubilee party. So I said, you know the white dress that I left in the wardrobe? Do you think you could bring it? <laughs> so he went out. Luckily, we don't live too far away. And I changed into another dress. And we were spared and... well, what would have been perhaps a delightful incident. <laughs> I had to sit there <laughs> for at least half an hour. And I had a huge feather boa, which I kept on putting on Christopher Biggins. <laughs> Around his neck. He really liked that. <laughs> and, uh, but it was fantastic. Dame Joan, I've got to leave it there. Good. Uh, but it was a <laughs> wonderful interview. It's great to it see you. And I cannot wait to see you in your Jack on Sunday. Uh, yes. The Platinum Jubilee is going to be amazing. Well, yes, I'm going to see you there. See you around. Uh, I'll see you there. OK. Yeah, and in fact, I'm seeing you for dinner tomorrow night. Oh, I'm, yeah. a lucky, I'm a lucky guy. New restaurant. And yeah. dinner with Joan Collins, let me tell you, is hilarious. Ah. Lovely to see you. Great to see you.